You're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're turning our attention to the State Commission on Ethics and Lobbying in Government, the entity created last year to replace the Joint Commission on Public Ethics, better known as JCOPE. And it's the creation process of the new watchdog that we're calling COLEG, for lack of a better shorthand, which is being challenged in court by former Governor Andrew Cuomo, who's hoping to avert a future ruling from the commission that might direct him to hand over the millions he was paid to write a pandemic memoir in 2021 with the help of government staff. For more on the legal challenge, we're joined by our pro bono counselor, Bill Mahoney, a Capitol reporter with Politico New York. Welcome back to the show, Bill. Thanks for having me. So what is it about the way COLIG is structured or was set up that makes it unconstitutional, according to the uh, former governor? So as you mentioned, COLEG was created by Governor Hochul in last year's budget to replace JCOPE, which was the ethics agency that Cuomo had created early on in his tenure. The big criticism of JCOPE over the years was that it was too friendly to the governor. He, he, he had close, not quite a majority, but he had a good chunk of the appointments to this commission. One of the rules basically gave people who were appointed to police ethics in New York the ability to veto investigations into the people who appointed them. So, for example, if the assembly speaker had appointed a member and the other members of this commission wanted to investigate the assembly speaker, as came up when Sheldon Silver, the former speaker, ran into some troubles a while back, the speaker's appointees could say, we're not doing this, move on. So... It was all these checks and balances that led to a lot of criticism that they couldn't really do a whole lot. And they didn't do a lot over the course of their decade or so in existence. Pretty much all they did was go after and penalize people who had already run into problems with federal prosecutors and kind of help clean up some stuff. But never, after a long list of scandals we had in Albany through much of Jacob's existence, they almost never played a leading role in actually bringing the charges on these. This new agency created by Hochul changes this up a little bit where there's not quite as much direct interaction between the elected officials and the people who are tasked with policing these elected officials. One, we've got this whole new tier of screening where some law school professors, for example, help screen some of the appointees and get the power to basically sign off on whether or not they're suitable of serving on this commission. And the veto power is gone. So that has changed. And it's also much less tied to the governor. At this point, I met only three of the commissioners are, um, are appointed by the governor compared to six from the legislative leaders, for example. And from what we've seen so far, and this agency is still getting it up and running. I was at their meeting a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of the discussion was about creating a new logo for themselves. Um, so they're not really, they're, they're still kind of a new thing. They don't have, we don't have a lot to judge them off of. We've seen that they do seem less connected to the governor than this previous Jacob ethics agency we had. One of the complaints about Jacob was anytime they needed a new executive director, they would launch a nationwide search for the finest ethics investigator, investigator in the entire country. And every time, without fail, the person they would land on would be somebody who had previously worked closely with Andrew Cuomo and, and was friendly with him. So is it the potential independent nature of the new commission that makes it unconstitutional, or, or is it the structure which might lend it to be more independent, which is ultimately the problem that the former governor, excuse me, is arguing? Well, he's basically arguing that New York cannot have an ethics agency that's too independent, which is what he says this one is. Because it needs to be, what, tied more closely to the governor's office? It needs well, to be tied more closely to the legislature? New York does have a very strong executive branch. Going back to the days of L. Smith and Robert Moses, we've got these constitutional amendments that come up. I'm sure you heard about them a lot when we were talking about the budget in the past couple mm -hmm. months. The governor has a lot of outsized power. And part of this is the governor gets to control the executive branch more so than even in a lot of other states. There are some entities that they don't get to control, like the attorney general, the controller. They're elected independently. The board of regents comes through the legislature. But pretty much everything else that's not spelled out in the constitution the governor has a lot of control over. And so what Cuomo is arguing in his lawsuit is that this means that the governor has control over things like policing the governor's office, and that cannot be punted off to some agency that has a lot of control from the legislature that violates separation of powers as established in these decades of court rulings we have determining how to divvy up power in state government. And there actually are a lot that he's pointed to. Just a few years ago, for example, we created a commission on prosecutorial misconduct mm -hmm. where it would basically investigate district attorneys accused of wrongdoing. And the courts determined 
during Cuomo's tenure that this was inappropriate because this led to legislative and judicial appointees having too much power to investigate these executive branch individuals, in this case, the district attorneys. We've seen it with the courts, the Commission on Judicial Misconduct, which has been around for decades. They needed to pass a state constitutional amendment to create that because there were concerns about people appointed by places like the legislative leaders and the governor's office investigating court officials because they are a separate branch of government. So he's pointing to all of these basically to argue that under the way New York State's constitution is structured, one branch of government is very limited in what it can do to police the other branches of government. Well, from your reporting on this issue, does Cuomo and his legal team, do they appear to be on an island when it comes to the argument they're making? Or do good government groups, other lawmakers seem to agree that, yes, if you want to empower an ethics watchdog in a meaningful way, it's going to take a constitutional change, uh, something that was not done in this case? Nobody knows for sure what the courts will decide on this. I have talked to some people who are not exactly Cuomo sympathizers who don't think he's coming at this completely, you know, as a long shot, like he has some merits to this. He has pointed out, like I said, these recent court cases that pretty much argue exactly what he's arguing for different types of investigations into state government. And he has pointed to some legislators have proposed constitutional amendments themselves in recent years to overhaul the way we enforce ethics in New York. Some of their argument has been that we can't really leave this up to the legislature and its whims and we need something strong to guarantee that we'll always have an effective ethics agency after the decades of scandals we've had here. Um, But he's pointing to this as basically evidence saying that, see, even some of these legislators who hate me, they have basically argued that we need a constitutional amendment to create an independent ethics commission. Well, for listeners just joining us, you're listening to the Capitol Press Room and we're talking with Bill Mahoney, a Capitol reporter for Politico New York, who's covering a lawsuit brought by former Governor Andrew Cuomo against the State Commission on Ethics and Lobbying in Government, which he's challenging the validity of. And I guess we should try to explain why the former governor cares about this at all. What is his beef with this ethics watchdog? Why does he care whether they live or die? Well, this goes back to his memoir, which has bedeviled him basically since he wrote it during the heart of the pandemic. You you might remember this book that came out that he spent the summer when a lot of businesses were still shut down at his orders, writing this book detailing how he defeated COVID You know, before the second and third and fourth waves all hit. I used that time to make some cooking videos. So I guess we all you know took that time differently. Did you get paid $5 million for those cooking videos? I can't disclose that and don't have to because I'm not a public okay. official. Well, in this case, they did. So there was a lot of scrutiny over this book deal that Cuomo had. And one of the things that came out is that he definitely used some state resources to write this book. And promote it. There are stories of, you know, staffers who are on the state payroll helping to write it and promote it, dealing directly with the publishers. Things were printed out at the Capitol and brought to the executive mansion, the taxpayer-funded house where the governor lives, where they would work on writing this. His people have argued that this is all de minimis help, where it's, you know, Nobody's going to go after an official for using a staple to clip something for their personal paperwork when they're leaving the office. And he basically argued that these were people doing stuff on their free time and any state resources that may have been used weren't much more than using a stapler here or there. The people who have looked at this, such as j the former ethics agency, have concluded otherwise. And one of their last acts before they were abolished was to go after Cuomo for this book deal. As I mentioned earlier, this former agency pretty much only went after officials after they already got in trouble. And in this case, they went after Cuomo after he was gone from office or on his way out at least. And they basically, after some legal maneuvering, ordered him to forfeit the $5 million that he had been paid for this book deal. That kind of stalled out in the courts. He sued them over the technical way this all played out and whether they had the authority to do this. That probably would have worked its way up the courts, been the subject of some highly covered appeals, but Jacob was abolished and replaced with this new agency, so there was nobody to actually appeal the lawsuit from Cuomo. But part of Cuomo's bringing the suit against the new agency, he basically mentioned in there, hey, I'm being investigated by this new ethics agency. So now we know for the first time, thanks to this Cuomo lawsuit, that he is still under investigation. And is it clear what would happen if the former governor was successful in his challenge to the constitutionality of the current incarnation of our ethics watchdog. Has anyone said what what it would mean to not have 
anyone currently on the beat? Would lobbyists have to just stop submitting information? Would public officers no longer need to file disclosure paperwork? Would we just shut down the website? What, if anything, could that future look like, at least in the interim? We would have to see what a court decides. They might just say that this agency doesn't have the power to investigate the executive branch. So then, yeah, we'd be left to federal investigators, presumably being the only ones who could investigate governors or their staffers for wrongdoing. They could, if Cuomo has everything he wants, they could just completely abolish this agency and strike down the law that created it. That would lead to some very uncertain times on the ethics policing beat. Presumably, that would, since they'd strike down the law that abolished J. Cope, they would bring back J. Cope, the one that existed for the previous decade. I would have to assume at that point that legislators would want to scramble to create something better so that way they don't would just they? have this. At least do something because is there it, any- at that point it would be very tough to find anybody who would even want to serve on Jacob. Who's going to want to volunteer their time to trek up to Albany multiple times a month to be in some ethics agency that exists only by court order with very little power? Uh, it, it just might be too much of a mess. And I'm not saying that I think they would be expected to create an ethics agency with a ton of teeth. And they might be limited if the court says they can't create an independent ethics agency. But it would be a messy situation where we might wind up with this former defunct one being brought back while they're looking at creating a new one or replacing this. And it goes back to the question of who would serve on something that might be abolished in four months before they even get their website up and running. Is there any reason to believe that state lawmakers uh, on their own might try to amend the state constitution to make a more aggressive ethics watchdog, uh, especially considering that good government groups were not necessarily a fan of this latest uh, incarnation? It depends where things wind up. If we wind up with a situation where the courts say you cannot have any ethics watchdog whatsoever unless there is a constitutional amendment, I could see there being enough pressure for them to do something, even if it's vague and leaves it up to the legislature to ultimately determine how this works. Or it could just be the type of thing that comes up in end of session negotiations next year saying like, oh, yeah, we're all talking about this and they never get around to doing it and we're left in limbo. But once again, this all comes back to whether or not Cuomo is successful. I imagine this has to work its way through a very lengthy court process first. So this probably isn't a question for this summer or fall or maybe even next year's session. This probably will drag on for quite some time. And because of the way our constitutional amendment process works, there really is no catalyst requiring action prior to 2024 since they need to act in two separate legislators. They need to act in two separately elected legislators. So let's say this drags on through the court system until next summer when the legislature is already gone for 2024. That would create a situation where they couldn't bring it up to the voters in New York until I think November of 2026, which would leave us in this limbo for quite some time. Well, we've been speaking with Bill Mahoney. He is a capital reporter for Politico New York. Bill, thank you for your time and your legal expertise. Thank you. And for more Capital Press Room content, visit capitalpressroom.org or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. And if you listen to us from an Apple device, make sure to leave us a rating and a review so it helps other people find the show. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.